Libby. Here's my new bio. Would you mind introducing me to this interesting-looking female type person? <laughs> Tess Miguel Everett Rutledge. Hi. Tess is Bren's secretary this week. Hello, you must be Tess. Yeah. Tess. I'm Bryn Newhouse. Bryn Newhouse. <laughs> uh, why don't you come in my office and bring your pad? We'll okay. get you started. <laughs> nice to meet you. Everett. <laughs> Sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, sorry to keep you waiting. Stuck on the phone. Pesky Business Week interview. Oh, uh, Marilyn Stedman or Don Wertheimer? Don Wertheimer. You read Business Week? Well, I, I read Mr. Dixon's. Actually, I read it to Mr. Dixon. <laughs> At least it's not every day. Um, no, it's a Wall Street Journal every day. But I read that on the ferry, so I sort of summarize it for him when I go to work. Ferry? I'm from Staten Island. People live there? <laughs> I thought that was an amusement park. <laughs> That's Coney Island. <laughs> well, Tess, I'm hiring a new junior executive for marketing. Call personnel. Tell them I want candidates who are intelligent, enthusiastic, personable. Female would be refreshing. Someone who is well-read, well-rounded, and well... Just terrific. <laughs> Each candidate must write a marketing report based on this same set of data. I'll... I'll get on it right away. Terrific. A uh, decaf, please. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, Everett, how was my report? I only had three days to write it, so if it's no good, please tell me so I don't go in there and humiliate myself. It was great. Really? I can never write a report like that. Lucky for me, I don't have to. <laughs> don't forget to say hi to your sister for me. I still can't believe you two were in Kappa Gamma together at Yale. <laughs> well, I certainly look forward to reading your report. I'll call you. Terrific. <laughs> Tess, yes, get me a spinach salad from downstairs, dressing on the side, and send in the next applicant. Spinach salad, I am the next applicant. What am I going to do now? Okay, who's got a spinach salad? Quick! I do. Give it up. <laughs> Go for it. Anyway, I sent it up to AJ to see what he thinks, but I am pretty much sold. Oh, Tess. Croissant. How oh, lovely. Uh, Mr. Trask likes raspberry jam. Have some. Good. Anyway, Everett, yeah. I am going to look like a genius for discovering this guy. <laughs> oh, uh, this guy, is he going to be a threat to me? Probably. Ouch. <laughs> Tess, call personnel and tell them I have chosen my junior executive. Sure. What's this guy's name again? Fred McDonald. Who? Fred McDonald. Fred McDonald. God! <laughs> I can't believe it! I guess she knows him. No, it's me. I am Fred McDonald. What? Well, see, you wouldn't read my report because I'm just a secretary, so I invented Fred McDonald, stuck his name on the cover, and handed it in. Brilliant. I see. How dishonest of you. Tess. <laughs> well, yes, it was dishonest, but don't you see, it was the only way that I could get Libby, you to... get me Marlene in Mr. Trass's office. Everett, go take a walk around the block. Uh, but it's snowing. Out. <laughs> Marlene, Bryn, uh, I need a favor. Can you check on something for me? I sent a report up to AJ this morning uh, by Fred McDonald. Do you have any idea if he's gotten to it yet? He has. Damn. Forget I called. Maybe it is a little idiosyncrasy of mine, but I do not like being made a fool of. A little prank like this might be cute in summer camp, but this is a multinational corporation, the one you used to work for. So pack up and get out. Now. Oh, Mr. Trask, I'm sorry. It's all right. It's my fault. I should have knocked. <laughs> well, if you'll excuse me, I was just leaving. No, stick around. We may need someone to take notes. Oh, good idea, AJ. Sit so pat over here. Uh, so, where's... Everett! 
taking a walk. <laughs> Only Everett would go walking in a blizzard. That's what I love about that kid. He sloshes to the beat of a different drummer. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, Fred McDonald. Fred McDonald. I read his report. He's one very sharp cookie. You hired him yet? Uh, not exactly, AJ. There, there, there are a few complications. What kind of complications? Well, I mean, there are a few other candidates that I'm still considering. Fine. It's your call. Yes. Yes, but we're in a meeting. Uh, I'll tell him. AJ, that was Marlene. Murph Griffin's in your office, and he's hopping mad. I hope he doesn't think he's going to dump those casinos off on me. I'll be back in a few minutes. All right. You had me cold. Why didn't you say anything? I heard AJ Trask say that I was a sharp cookie. Me. Tess McGill from Staten Island. And that pretty much tells me I can get a job anywhere. So why would I want to work for somebody who doesn't want me? Have a nice life. Hello, Tess. Well, it's cold out there. <laughs> sure could use a cup of coffee. Get your own coffee. Tess isn't a secretary anymore. She's your colleague now. Oh, wait a minute. Does this have anything to do with the fact that she's Fred McDonald? <laughs> yes, it does. Tess, bottom line, you wrote a good report. You were clever enough to get me to read it, and you didn't embarrass me when you could have. It's the kind of loyalty I'm looking for. And I'm betting that you are going to make me look good. So, welcome to marketing, and congratulations. I'll call personnel and get the paperwork in motion. Uh, Bryn? I tell you what, I will think about it, and I'll let you know what I decide in the morning. I was on a blind date. Hank, whose wife had just left him, he burst into tears. Mr. Trask comes walking over. One thing leads to another. No. Nothing led to anything. It was just dinner. We just had dinner. That was it. So what's his house like? I didn't go to his house. Hotel? He's trying to tell you that nothing happened. What's the matter with you? You got potatoes in your ears? All right, just tell me this. Did Mr. Trask mention my name at all? Nothing happened. All right. That's, that's good enough for me. Why doesn't anybody believe me? I don't know. <laughs> Can I speak to you for a teeny tiny minute? Um, look, before you say anything, it is not true. What's not true? Nothing. What's not true? Oh, you mean that silly little rumor about you and AJ that's been wafting through the quarter? Yeah, that one. <laughs> you didn't really expect me to believe that, did you? Well, I was hoping you wouldn't, but I was afraid you would. <laughs> I know what you're up to. When I was first starting out, a friend of mine, I'll call her Sabette, was eager to rise through the ranks. So she decided to sleep with the boss. But he didn't want to. But then she realized it didn't matter whether she really slept with him or not, as long as people thought that she had. So Sabette started a little rumor, hoping that all of the vice presidents would run scared. But it didn't work. So you see, Tess, I hate to be the one to burst your little bubble, but you and AJ, <laughs> it's just laughable, dear. Morning, everyone. Thank you. Morning, Tess. Hi. I had a terrific time Friday night. Thanks. <laughs> I haven't stayed up that late in years. You corporate climbing. How much work done when no one else is here? Boy, I think how much we could done if we weren't here. <laughs> All 
I know is we did some good work on this project. Good? Great! We make a hell of a team! Wait a minute. We are more than a team. We're... we're... A league? Yeah! <laughs> we're getting history in the making! Excuse me. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to interrupt your little early morning hoedown. Well, actually, Bryn, we've been here since six. We, uh, finished the Nolaton report. We had this total breakthrough this morning. We combined all the stuff from research that we've been working... I'm reading. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> hmm. What, you, you like something? I misread it. No. <laughs> The report is full of syntax flaws, redundancies, and logic errors. Needs a total rewrite. Just do the best you can. <laughs> oh, morning, y'all. I'm sorry I'm late. Subway broke down and I had to walk. Don't worry about it. It's what, only, uh... Oh, after nine. Maybe you are late. I want you here at nine o'clock sharp. How many times have I told you? I don't know. I tuned you out the first time. <laughs> Just about had it with your so-called sense of humor. Oh, what? I'm sorry, I wasn't listening. <laughs> well, come on, we're all here now, and I mean, 12 minutes isn't the end of the world, right? No, just the end of her job. Next time you're late, don't bother coming in at all. That's it, I'm punching her lights out. Tess, nothing is going to be accomplished by attacking her car. <laughs> I've heard all these excuses before. Oh, no, this is not the first time you've reneged. Frankly, I'll have to rethink our association. Goodbye, Mother. <laughs> Libby, make a note. My mother canceled dinner tonight. No problem. Was only penciled in. <laughs> so, Tess, what do you want? Memorandum to mailroom. I have the following ten complaints. Number one, I am tired of receiving bent mail. <laughs> what is it? Bryn, I have to talk to you. Go ahead. Number two, <laughs> regarding that irritating squeaky wheel on that mail cart. <clears throat> I, I, I can't talk to you while you're dictating. What is it? Well, I, I, I know you're really busy. Um, can we have lunch? Lunch? All right, uh... Three weeks from tomorrow. <laughs> I just can't wait. Well, well wait a minute. What, what about dinner? I know you're free. Your mom just canceled. I know you can come to my place. I'll cook. Uh, I really wish I could, but uh, I'm just going to be working at home tonight. Uh, the exterminator's called. They're pretty much done. If you go home tonight, they suggest you wear a wet cloth over your face. <laughs> Damn, I forgot. That's why I said I'd eat with my mother. <laughs> Dinner at your place sounds lovely. <laughs> we gotta go, Sal. Bryn's coming over. So great. You two go up to Lana's and do some girl stuff. <laughs> I'll stay here and butter up Bryn. Where's the butter? <laughs> and what makes you think she'll be interested? You only had half a day with Bryn, and according to you, nothing ever happened. Yeah, but she wants me. She dreams about me at night. She calls her exercise bike Sal. <laughs> Hi, Bryn. Hello. Have we met? <laughs> you want me. <laughs> she wants me. Bryn, hi. Come on in. Oh, dear. I didn't know I'd be this overdressed. <laughs> well, I'd stay, but I don't have to. <laughs> Sad, sad day when multinational acquisitions are regulated, Tess. <laughs> yep, it's a sad, sad, sad day. You know what Mr. Trask always says? It's a sad day when multinational acquisitions are regulated? <laughs> he told you? <laughs> no, you just did. <laughs> I'm sure we'll regulate.
Revelation is a long way off. <laughs> oh, about my life. You know what it's like to be a successful, high-powered businesswoman at the top? Well, I oh, of course you don't. <laughs> well, let me tell you, it's not easy. If I let up for a second, the whole place goes to hell. Why do I have to tell every single person every last little thing to do? Well, I don't think you do, Bryn. See, that's what I wanted to talk to you about, was that... Well, maybe if you treated people with a little more respect... You know, listen it's to... not it. fair. <laughs> I never get to chit-chat aimlessly by the water cooler. No one knows how my weekend was or if it's hot enough for me. I'll never have any fun. In fact, this is the most fun I've had in years, and this isn't that great. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, when I'm sorry, I, I had no idea. Come on, I'm sure you've had fun sometime. Never. Well, what about when you were a kid? I never had any fun. <laughs> Come on. Well, what, what about your birthday? Oh, they always started out full of high hopes. Every year I'd wake up early to see if Rosa got me anything special. Rosa? The maid. <laughs> My parents were always vacationing in Europe. I'd wait by the phone all day, certain that they'd call, but they never did. Eventually, I'd fall asleep with my little head on the phone. Rosa would pick me up and carry me to bed. By the time I was 15, it was pretty hard on her back. <laughs> but they never remembered, and I never quit hoping. That's the saddest thing I've ever heard. Yeah. Friday's my birthday, and still no one cares. No one cares about me, so I don't care about them. Birthday stink. No, are you kidding? Come on, you gotta do something special. Maybe I'll break out that frozen Mars bar I've been saving. <laughs> no, I, I mean, well, what have you always wanted to do on your birthday? Well, I guess I, I always pictured a big surprise party with, with a chocolate train cake with peppermint wheels and and, and animal balloons and everything pink, pink crepe paper and shiny party hats and a really funny clown named Mr. Ding Dong. <laughs> that sounds great. Yeah. Yeah, maybe if I'd had that party, I'd be a different person than I am today. But I didn't. So instead, I'm gonna make your lives a living hell. <laughs> Where are those two lazy, brainless, pathetic excuses for executives? Boy, whoever she's looking for is going to be in big trouble when she finds them. Ah, <laughs> uh, excuse me, Mrs. Trask? Hi. We were wondering if you were busy uh, Friday afternoon. I'm the head of a multinational corporation. What do you think? <laughs> Maybe we could rent some prisoners. <laughs> Don't give up. She's gonna love the stuff I bought. <laughs> no wonder the knowledge in report is late. I'm surprised. No. I am disgusted by your performance. I try to be nice and understanding, but you just take advantage. Well, I've had it. You two want to have a party. Have it on your own time. We're not having a party. We're planning a party. For you. Everett. A party? For me? Yeah. It was supposed to be a surprise for your birthday. Hope you like chocolate cake. As a matter of fact, I don't. <laughs> but they make a wonderful raspberry tort at the Four Seasons. The one they served at the going away party for Leona Helmsley. <laughs> this is awfully thoughtful. I wouldn't have expected it of you two. Oh, and uh, like I said, do it on your own time. <laughs> Everyone's going to be waiting for the guest of honor. Did you remember to invite everyone important? Don't worry, I invited everybody. <sighs> Libby, you coming? As soon as I finish this article on squat techniques. <laughs> Still don't know why we're having it in here. I hope there's room.
Nice job, Tess. Uh, happy birthday, Bryn. <laughs> well, oh, see, we've got another thing to go to. Yeah. Party down. <laughs> you call yourself an executive? You can't even organize a party. You picked a bad place, a bad time, bad food. No wonder no one's here. No. You want to know why nobody's here? I'll tell you why nobody's here. Because you're a bitch. <laughs> you say that like it's a bad thing. <laughs> it is a bad thing. Look it up. <laughs> what? Bryn? Mr. Trask. Oh, uh, what can I do for you? I just read the Nullerton report. I'd like to see you in my office. Now. And bring Tess McGill with you. Well, now you've done it. <laughs> You're right. Pardon me? Did you say something? No. <laughs> I said you're right. I guess the reason I'm not really good relating to people is because of my childhood. Uh, my parents weren't exactly the king and queen of France, if you know what I mean. <laughs> no, I'm not sure I do. <laughs> well, I heard they were really nice to their kids. <laughs> Look, I'm, I know you had it rough. I mean, not having a, a birthday party and, and everything. I'm sorry. But you know, a, a lot of people had it rough. And it's sometime you just have to move on. I mean, you said that if, if people don't care about you, why should you care about them? Well, it's, it's the other way around. You have to make the first gesture. You have to, you have to start by being a little more considerate. You may have something there. It certainly hasn't worked my way. But I might need your help. I'd be glad to. God, I never realized how high Mr. Trast's office was. <laughs> Thank you for my party. You're welcome. And thank you for telling me the truth. Sure. And if Trask hates an Ollerton report, I'll take the heat. Thank you. Come on, let's get this over with. Come in. I know you're not six years old No, anymore, it's but... perfect. It's exactly how I pictured it. Pink crepe paper. Oh, and a train take. And little capers making animal balloons. Uh, I'm not very good at it, get it? It's either a snake or... or a snake going the other way. Libby, you made it. I only came for the cake. <laughs> yeah, Ted. Happy birthday, Bryn. I'm sorry I couldn't find a clown suit. No, no, that's exactly how I pictured Mr. Ding Dong. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday. I wish you all the best. And I bought you a little gift. Oh, A.G., how sweet. What is it? I don't know. You'd have to ask my secretary. <laughs> but whatever it is, enjoy. <laughs> and excuse me, I'm doing bank up. Tess, this is the most wonderful thing anybody's ever done for me. Look, I'm sorry about the fake party downstairs, but uh, I, I didn't know how else to get through to you. Oh, it's all right. You made this one all the better. You know what I'd like to do? I'd like to take you someplace really special for dinner tonight. 
You know all about me. I'd like to know something about you. You know, your hopes, your dreams, your jack. When did you get back into town? I just flew in from Rome. I had some papers to drop off for AJ. I haven't seen you since that long weekend in Barbados. Yeah, we've got a little bit of catching up to do. How about some dinner? I'd love to, Jack. But I couldn't possibly leave right now. All these people have gone to all this trouble to show me this wonderful show of their affection. Leaving now just wouldn't be right. I understand. Another time. This has been so great. In fact, I've had so much fun, it's given me a splitting headache. I'm going to have to beg off for the rest of the evening. Sure. Well, I, I hope you feel better, and I hope you had a happy birthday. update on the Nullerton report. Thank you, Bryn. Who's next? I am, sir. Go ahead. Everett. Right. <laughs> We'd like to bring you up to date on how our chain of Trascateria restaurants is doing. How are they doing? In a word, sir, not so good. <laughs> Even though the food is good and the price is right, there's been a steady fall off in customer satisfaction. I'm well aware of that. Yes, you're well aware of it. <laughs> Why is this happening? Uh, we have several theories. What's your theory? People don't like the name. <laughs> What's your other theory? I think we're seeing the beginning of a trend away from hamburgers, hot dogs, french fries. Toward? Soufflés, quiches, ratatouilles. <laughs> so you think we should change the menu? Immediately. How about you, Tess? Well, um, I've been thinking about something. I've uh, gone to ten different Trascateries in the last month. <laughs> You're kidding. <laughs> and the thing that's missing is human being. I mean, you shout your order into a life-size trask in the box, <laughs> and then you wait in a holding pen for your food to come out on a conveyor belt in a sterilized container. So? Well, <laughs> there's no personal touch. I mean, I was, I was in my dad's deli this morning, and, and he talks to his customers. He knows their names, and they come back day after day, year after year, and it's, you know, it's like, it's like a huge family, all built on, on trust and, and personal service. He makes, like, 13 different hero sandwiches, all named after people in the neighborhood. He, he uses uh, six different kinds of cheeses, bakes his own Italian breads, had eight, eight, eight different meat, prosciutto, salami, pastrami, um, corned beef, roast beef. Sliced turkey breast, um, pepperoni. God, I can almost smell it. Wait a minute, I do smell it. <laughs> he, he did it again. See, my dad thinks I'll starve if he doesn't hide lunch in my briefcase. Well, that's my dad. You probably have to meet him and see the place to know what I'm talking about. Well, let's go. What? Libby! Yo! I haven't bring my limo around. Rolls or the caddy? Caddy. Standard or the stretch? Stretch. White or the black? Black. Uh, Mr. Trask, you mean uh, you're just gonna go to Staten Island? Now? Why not? I don't have another meeting until 4 o'clock. Oh, actually, sir, I wasn't quite finished with my presentation. Yeah, you were. <laughs> Best you come with me. Everett, Bryn, you stay here, work on the menu, and a new name. But does it have to have Trask in it? I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> Mr. Trask, I mean, we're really going to do this? Just drive to Staten Island and then walk into my father's store unannounced? Well, don't worry, Tess. I won't embarrass you. No, no, no. It, it's not that. It's just that I can't believe you just do this on the spur of the moment. Tess, in 1978, I flew to Austin, Texas on the spur of the moment for a bowl of chili. On the way back, I had to make several stops. <laughs> One was in Amarillo, where I read in the local paper that a ball bearing factory was about to close. I loved ball bearings when I was a kid. So I bought it, turned it around, and two years later sold it for a $68 million profit. On the same trip, I met my first wife, and that cost me $40 million. 
So, Chase, you never know. This trip to Staten Island could be a gold mine, or it could be a waste of time. I like having to explain all this to you. <laughs> now, let's go and uh, bring that sandwich. And here's a picture of Ms. McGill when she was just three years old sitting on my belly. <laughs> What's that she's wearing? Here? Test wax paper. <laughs> Here's another one. When she was just 10 months old, she's sitting on a hoagie. <laughs> and he says, paper cups? I thought you said paper cuts. And he lowers his price 15%. <laughs> Well, that's the kind of thing you don't learn from an income statement. <laughs> ah, ah, Bryn, what do you have on uh, inventory? Our research shows that for the chain to be successful, inventory control is absolutely essential. Joe, how do you handle inventory? Well, actually, this is an idea I got in January of 1967. How do you remember the month? Well, Tessie was just two years old, and... She was sitting by the pickle barrel playing with some crayons and... Oh, shoot, I didn't bring that picture. That's okay, Dad. Well, anyway, the crayons gave me an idea. I mark every can with a blue X and every bag with a yellow X. Then I keep a different record on paper. Then when somebody buys something, I mark it off with a different color. I'm not sure I follow you. Why don't you uh, show us? How do you mean? Right in here. Hmm. I guess it's not quite ready yet. Maybe we should come back tomorrow. That's my store. Well, actually, it's just a mock-up. Don't eat anything. It's not real. But how did they know what, what, what it looks like? I described it to them. <laughs> no wonder they call you AJ. Actually, those are my real initials. Still, it fits. <laughs> so can you come back tomorrow and talk to us? If it's okay with Tessie. How about it, Tessie? <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> Greg figures we'll get free press coverage of all six of us. All heads of multinational corporations, mind you. Do a big group skydive. <laughs> no, skydiving. <laughs> yes, but the last minute. Donald Trump panics, and he won't jump. So Leona, who's got nothing to lose, says, okay, Greg, this was your bright idea. Put on a shoot, and let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what happened? <sighs> so, well, we all jump out, right? So far, everything is perfect. Then I hear someone scream from the plane. Damn, I forgot to load the camera. Come back. That's <laughs> too <laughs> Very amusing. Mr. Trask, Mr. Milken can't go to the hockey game tonight. He says he doesn't feel safe. Oh, damn. <laughs> I hate to go to a hockey game alone. Everett, you like hockey? Mm -hmm. Not really, sir. Let's go. Uh, have fun. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have to leave, too. My mother just had her wisdom teeth out, and I so rarely get a word in edgewise. <laughs> Tess, make sure that Greg has everything he needs. All right. Thanks. Well, hasta mañana. Ciao, ciao. This was just delivered. Another ticket. Well, he is nuts if he thinks that I am going to fall for this again. I don't want his damn ticket. Sorry, this is not going to happen again. This time there's a card. Oh, you might as well read it. Dear Bryn, come join me in Rome this weekend. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I'll repeat this once more before the IRS guy gets here. Everett, we had 14 lunches and 12 dinners together last year. We went to the movies nine times, and I always bought you a large box of jujubes. But I like milk duds. He ate jujubes. Why don't you just hire an accountant? Because they're all wimps. Give me 10 minutes alone with this guy, and I'll have him eating out of my hands. You tell them they've got a big calculator, you're home free. <laughs> Hello, I'm looking for Ms. Bryn Newhouse. 
I'm from the Internal Revenue Service. My name is Sue Crest. I've heard all the jokes, just forget it. Out of my way, Everett. Hi, I'm Bryn Newhouse. It's a pleasure to meet you, Sue. Perhaps you know my, my cousin. He works for Senator... Save it. <laughs> I guess I'm just not cut out to be an executive. Look, we're gonna get you another job. Whatever it takes, we're gonna do it. Nah, I'll stay a secretary. I just love picking the celery out of my boss's tuna. <laughs> Anybody ask me to do anything personal, I just give them the stare. What's the stare? Libby, could you get me a cup of... <laughs> Actually, I, I don't need the caffeine. <laughs> Wow, I'm impressed. Stick around. I'll teach you the Heimlich maneuver. That's how I got my raise. <laughs> Come on. That IRS hound has been in there for a week and a half. She doesn't want to eat. She doesn't want to drink. She doesn't want a new Cartier watch. <laughs> what am I going to do if I owe the government money? I simply don't have any extra money to give them. I'm sure if you explain it like that, they'll understand. She just sits there scrutinizing every little receipt, and I wrote them so they couldn't be scrutinized. Maybe it won't be that bad. Are you kidding? She's going to the big house. <laughs> just bring cigarettes. Don't worry, Bryn. I'll loan you the money. Oh, Everett, that's so nice of you. What are they, $1.50 a pack? <laughs> Ms. Newhouse. Yes, Sue, dear. Finish so soon. Not just yet. Since when is waxing your car deductible? No, not my car. Let me explain. <laughs> I am in auditing hell. Now she's talking to the regional commissioner. Ms. Newhouse, I'm off the phone. Was the connection okay for you? <laughs> Maybe we should discuss this in private. Oh, God. No, I, I need to be around my friends now. <laughs> or at least people who work for me and have to stay here. <laughs> I'm afraid I have some bad news. Just, just tell me. I've been recalled to Washington. Can't discuss the details, classified. Suffice it to say, I have bigger fish than you to fry. And fry they will. <laughs> I hope that this doesn't mean that all your work on my audit will be, well, I don't know, in vain? Oh, I'm afraid it will be. What a shame. <laughs> my replacement should be here soon. Nice kid. Name's Morgan. Kid? He's new. Fresh. Idealistic. I was like that once myself. Well, I've got to go cripple some presidential ambitions. <laughs> Did you hear what she said? Like a lamb to the slaughter, he's a kid. I own him. Hi. I'm looking for Bren Newhouse. Uh, Mr. Morgan? From the IRS? James. James. How extraordinary. You know, my father's middle name. <laughs> Save it, lady. I've heard it all. Like a lamb to the slaughter, huh? Bah! Hi, AJ. Sorry I'm late, but I was proofing the knowledge and report. Actually, Bryn, this is so a party. Relax. Relax? Well, do you some good to have some fun once in a while. Maybe you're right, AJ. So, heard any good jokes lately? No. <laughs> hello, 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 nice to see you. Never be honest with me, okay? Does this look weird and totally out of place? Yeah, it looks like you're flashing. I mean the dress. I feel like I'm in an Easter parade and everybody else is at a funeral. Don't be silly. You look pretty. Here, let me help you off with your coat. Okay. No wonder she didn't want a date. What's he saying that's so damn fascinating? Yeah. She smell great, too. I do? Yeah, what's the name of your perfume? It's called Adorable. So I'm gonna get a gift for a friend of mine. You mind if I, uh... Sure. Now what's he doing? Give me this tray. 
Oh, hello. I'll have a martini very dry on the rocks. What, are your arms broke? Get it yourself. <laughs> now, look. Just because you know how to fill out a pair of jeans, that does not give you the license for rudeness. You know something, lady? You got a real stick up your... Hey, that's it. Uh, who ordered the, uh... I am so sorry. I'm sorry. I'm okay. Hey, you know, this better come out with spray and wash. Sorry. What is wrong with you? What are you nuts? Everett is my co-worker. Oh, yeah? Then why was he having your neck for dessert? What's going on with you, Nothing school? is going on. And what business is it of yours anyways? Now, get out of here. No, better yet, get out of my life. I can take a hint. I'm still not leaving without you. <laughs> oh, in case you're wondering, I got my own martini. What do you want, a medal? <laughs> Do you have a name by any chance? Sal. Sal. That's short for Salvatore, isn't it? Well, it isn't short for saliva. <laughs> Hi. Excuse me, did you see the guy who spilled the tray of drinks? He's in the conference room, reloading. <laughs> The power's back on. I, I was just showing Sal here the offices when the lights went out and I tripped and Sal was good enough to catch me, weren't you, Sal? Huh? Why didn't you tell me you knew Tess? Dolores! Oh, it looks great now that the swelling's gone down. Good night, Mr. Trust. Thanks for the party. Women! What the hell do they want? <laughs> Pretty much what we all want. I mean, kindness, understanding, affection, unconditional love. What do you think, Bill? From my experience, they want diet soft drinks. <laughs> We know where he is. Lana, we don't care where he is. We don't care what he does, and we don't care who he does it with. Good, because he just walked in with some babe in a tight leather skirt. <laughs> so, these are the people who watch Roseanne. <laughs> Yo, this is my hangout. Let's eat. This isn't where we're having dinner, is it? Yeah. I'll show you off. I mean, you're one of the best-looking broads in here. Well, I'm one of the few without a mustache. Look, what, what do you think? You're better than them? You're not. You all put your pantyhose on one leg at a time. I'll try to keep an open mind. Good. Go grab us a table, will you? I'll get us a couple of beers, all right? All right. Don't be long. <laughs> Tess! Hi, Bryn. <laughs> A nice surprise. <laughs> you know? So, I bet you're wondering what I'm doing with Sal. You probably think that a guy like Sal would never be my type. I mean, after all, he's unsophisticated, he's inarticulate, he's barely educated. But he does have a certain animal charm. I guess you've seen him eat, huh? <laughs> At least he's not some ineffectual wimp like all the men that I meet. All I have to do is just look at some guys and they're totally intimidated. Hi. Choke on it! <laughs> Hey, 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 what do we have here? What a coincidence, all of us running into each other like this. Life, a never-ending mystery. <laughs> what are they doing now? 
Oh, make me puke. He's doing that thing like when Bing Crosby teaches a girl to play golf in a movie. <laughs> oh, look, Sal, I got one in. You just lost. That was the eight ball. I quit. Too many rules. Let's get out of here. Right, um... Great. I'll be right back. Too much beer. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bryn and I are leaving, in case you're interested. Bye, have fun. Uh, we'll be at my place if you uh, need me. Oh, we won't need you. <laughs> I know how you really feel, Tess, so all you gotta do is say, don't go, and I won't. Sal, go. I want you to. <laughs> you're making this tough, you know that? All set. See you Monday, Tess. Good night. Don't forget to buckle up. <laughs> Hello, Nick's ye old big screen billiard parlor. <laughs> it's for you. For me? Hello? Giving you one last chance. Sal, so, where are you? In the parking lot. <laughs> Just say, don't go, Tess. That's all you gotta do. Tess, you coming? No, I'm going alone. You go ahead and walk. Does this mean I don't get a good night kiss? Bye, Lana. <laughs> Sal, it's cold. Let's go. Hold on. Uh, go back to the car. I'll be right there. I, I thought you were going back for your jacket. Who are you talking to? Sal? Yeah, I'm not talking to nobody. I gotta hang up. I'm going, Sal. This is ridiculous. I'm not stupid, Sal. Goodbye. <laughs> Brim, where are you going? Tess? Great. Brim, hey, wait up! Look, I'm really sorry how things turned out between you and Sal. Who? Oh, the guy in the jeans. I forgot all about him. <laughs> Hi, Everett. Morning, Tess. Brim, great party Friday night, huh? Really? Last I saw you, you had a lap full of margaritas. Ah, uh, sure. Except for that. So, oh, and my zipper got caught in the hand dryer in the men's room. <laughs> and then I spent two hours talking to this guy, Ducky Biddle. He's crying about his divorce and using up all the paper towels. I just hate to see guys in emotional turmoil. I mean, Ducky Biddle drives a Lamborghini. Summer's in Portofino. But that didn't keep his ex from breaking his heart. Money can't buy love, huh? Yeah. I feel sorry for him. Mm. He's so vulnerable. He'd be easy pickings for the first thing in a skirt to hear about his family's millions. <laughs> what was that all about? I think Ducky just got lucky. <laughs> it was fair. It was good. Lee good, fairly good. <laughs> and I, for one, am impressed. We'll take it up to Mr. Trask this afternoon. Really? Oh, that's great. My first presentation, and I'll be making it to Mr. Trask. Oh, no, Tess. Just Everett and I will be at the meeting. Oh, um, can I ask why? It, it was my report, and you did say it was good. Tell her, Everett. Well, I have no idea why she's not going, Brent. <laughs> will you excuse us, Everett? Sure. What'd you do? Out. <laughs> You've been at this job, what? Oh, about... You're new, you're still learning the ropes. That's fine. Relax. And listen, because I am going to give you some very important advice. I believe promoting you was the right thing to do. There are just a few little things you need to work on. What things? Everything. Your clothes, <laughs> hair, jewelry, makeup. Oh, I could spend half a day on that alone. <laughs> okay. Let me tell you something, Tess. You have to look and act like an executive to be taken seriously. It's tougher for women than it is for men. Bottom line. You have to look good enough to date, yet tough enough to intimidate. Think these shoulders are really mine? I hope not. <laughs> no, no, I mean no. First, we'll make you better looking. First? You, you mean there's more? Yes, social skills, demeanor, the... Accent. Libby. Yo. Please come in here and bring your pad. I'm jamming. <laughs> Why the long face, Tess? This isn't the end of the world. In fact, it's going to be fun. You'll see. 
Libby, call Vivica at Saks. Tell her I'm sending her somebody to outfit. You can go at your lunch hour. Then call Renee at my hair salon and tell him... Tell him it's an emergency. <laughs> I need him to do the usual. You mean full body electrolysis? <laughs> no. Total makeover. Hair and makeup, everything. You can go after work tonight. Oh, I have to be someplace by 7.15. But I can do both. <laughs> Vivica called your Armani suit is in. Oh, thanks. Oh, Tess. Yeah. Well, look at you. <laughs> That's more like it. Viv really is a miracle worker. Thanks. You know, she was so nice and she was really helpful. Of course, she did clean out my bank account, but it was worth it. Well, it's certainly a start. Good morning, all. Hi. Wow, Tess. What, did uh, Bryn have a garage sale? <laughs> you know, that's not a bad idea. Why don't you stop by this weekend and I'll clean out my closets? Oh. Thanks, and we'll have lunch. That's okay. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. Let's try out your new look, shall we? I'm having a few of the women executives up to my office for drinks this afternoon. Why don't you stop by? Seven-ish. I would love to come. Wow! <laughs> Bryn, hi. Terrific party. Diana, this is the girl I was telling you about. Uh, oh, your protege. You're Diana Glass, right? Oh, I was so impressed with how you handled that Sandtrax takeover bid. Uh, Bryn, she's adorable. I want one. <laughs> <laughs> you have no idea how satisfying it is. It's like finding a diamond in the dirt. <gasps> That reminds me, have you seen the diamond ring Kim St. Peter's husband bought her for having the baby? Well, it seems she has gotten so fat it won't fit on her finger. No, Tess, you've seen her. How fat is she? Well, oh, Catherine, she... come join us. Hi, Bryn. Hi, Diana. Well, who do we have here? This is my new junior executive I found. Well, you're a very lucky girl to be studying at the feet of the master. Well, it really is a terrific opportunity, and I see... So, who's seen Distribution's annual report? I have. I thought it was pretty good. Nancy I... Connor's picture is hysterical. Oh, I know. Have you seen her latest facelift? Her skin is pulled so tight, she could be a percussion instrument. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody. Great party, huh? Everett, yes. you know this is for ladies only. Oh, I can't stay. I'm just dropping this report off. I totally forgot you were having a cocktail party with some of the most powerful executives in the company. And I might add, some of the most attractive as well. I'll look at it tomorrow. Well, my suggestion, exactly. It needs to breathe a little. <sighs> You'll be leaving now. Tess, be a dear and see him to the door, will you? Sure. So, has anyone mentioned my name? No, but you should be glad. So how you doing? You're making an impact? Well, considering the fact that they haven't even asked me what my name was, I'd have to say no. <laughs> Look, you want people to know your name? There are two ways to go. One, tell them something they want to know. Or two, wear a name tag. <laughs> Thanks. I'll keep that in mind. All right. Okay. Well, let me know if anyone says anything about me. Okay. Unless, of course, it'll hurt my feelings, then lie. <laughs> Well, my contract is up. And bottom line, I think I should be asking for at least as much as Ted Franks is making. Whatever that is. Oh, absolutely. Equal pay. There's got to be a way to at least find out if he's making six figures or not. Oh, uh, he is. I worked in accounting and payroll came through our office. <clears throat> That's right. You must have had access to the amount of everyone's salary in the company. That's right, I did. <laughs> oh, really? How fascinating. I'm sorry, what was your name again? 